Welcome to Path Soundbites IGTV. Keeping new music alive is what I do on the radio and now on video. Conducting live chats with the artists and learning the story behind their latest release and also playing their new video. A very special thank you to my friend Hadley at Chipster PR and Consulting for scheduling and coordinating today's guest. Chipster PR and Consulting Incorporated is a highly sought after internationally renowned publicity, marketing, and consulting firm in the music industry. For more information, you can email Hadley or Chip at info at chipsterpr.com or phone 484-932-8951. Special thanks today to my sponsor, GoGo Tuners. For all guitar players looking for a focus on ease of use, readability, durability, and accuracy, look no further. The GoGo Tuner is the choice of many touring professionals and a favorite of casual players. GoGo's signature green ear in and red ear out screen makes tuning quick and easy. For more information, go to the website at gogotuners.com. Special thanks to WBXO Classic Rock Radio Redefine, allowing me to keep new music alive on the radio airways on the Pat Show every Sunday from 5 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Only on WBXO Classic Rock Redefined. And a big thank you to Mr. Evan Balzer for allowing me to use his amazing instrumental that you're hearing right now. It's called Trails. To find out more incredible music by Evan, go to his website at evanbolzer.com. And today I have a returning guest, singer-songwriter, Mr. Terry Leroy of Granny Four Barrel and Leroy 13. Granny Four Barrel just released a single called The Art of Deception. We play the video, we talk to Terry about the track, What's going on with Granny Four Barrel, our favorite granny, and also Leroy 13. Terry informs us another track will be coming out from that all-star band in about a month. All that and a whole lot more right here on Pat Soundbites IGTV. Hey, live on Pat Soundbites IGTV, rocking new music on the radio and on video, and I got, well, I got them back. But it's a him, it's a her, whatever you want to call it. The, <laughs> the matriarch of metal without the gear, without the, without the hat band, without the glasses. I got the wonderful Terry Leroy of Granny Four Barrel and Leroy 13. How are you, my man, Terry? Yeah, buddy. What's up, Pat? Doing uh, great, man. Uh, that's, that's, quite a, that's quite an introduction. Hey, you know, Granny is still with us. All right. Here she oh, no, no, no. Oh, there's, there's, <laughs> there's Granny. How are you, Granny? She's here in spirit. She's okay, spirit. that's cool. I'm <laughs> sorry. You knocked, you knocked out ACDC. Oh, my yeah, God. Jesus. I knocked, that's all right, because I'm going to replace it with Nazareth. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. You're old school like me. I like that. Yeah. Hair of the dog, man. Hair of the dog. I got that around. It's, it's hiding over here somewhere. Well, yeah. anyway, man, how you been? We talked the last time we talked, I want to say the end of January. I'm, my notes are all over the freaking Something place. Something like that, yeah. Um, we did the, uh, you guys did the Leroy 13, Stand Up and Shout, Ronnie James Dio. All proceeds went to the Dio Cancer Foundation. I, how did that go? It worked out quite well, I hope. Well, it, yeah, and it's just, you know, it's it's in perpetuity. It just keeps going, right? Keeps just, going, right? Just, That's yeah, what, just keep on streaming and, and keep on downloading it and uh you will it, it, it'll uh, all the money goes to the to the proceeds excellent the, what happened well, to excuse my... me all the proceeds go to the foundation yes oh uh, wow. lost a video part of you here pat can you see me hello pat yeah i just froze up hold yeah, on here. i can still see the top of your head <laughs> hmm. uh yeah 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 come on that's all right if you have to start it again, we start it again. We just got into it. I'm going to have to talk fast today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see your name. And um, 
strange, just like half the screen. Okay, I see you stay right there. <clears throat> Try this again. <clears throat> I gotta get a new webcam. Okay, here we go. Oh, there you are. All right, round two. One, three. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> Come on. Three, two, one. Hey, live on Pet Sound Bites IGTV. I better not be waving too much because my webcam is fucking up. Oh, 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 man. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I wonder. Look, you little prick, you. <laughs> Shit. I'm going to get Granny to kick your fucking ass in a minute here. Pretty much. All right, let me unplug. It's plugged in. All right, try this again. I'm going to scream. <sighs> Three, two, one. Live on Pet Sound Bites IGTV, keeping new music alive on the radio and on video. And I'm rocking with this guy, Mr. Terry Leroy of Granny Four Barrel and Leroy 13 back, returning with us again. Upstate New York, downstate New York, rocking all yous out there today. Terry, how are you, my man? Yeah, buddy, doing great, Pat. It's exciting you look, to be here, man. How you doing? I'm well, I'm doing great as long as this webcam doesn't I'm yeah, gonna yeah. throw it in the garbage and step on it. Have Granny kick the shit out of it. Yeah, um, I'm doing great. <laughs> Last time we chatted, we were rocking, helping you uh, for the uh, Dio Foundation, Ronnie James Dio. You and I, an, an all star lineup did a great job of uh, stand up and shout. Oh my God, the vocals, the whole production was done well i encourage everybody to check out that video and if you got a couple of dollars terry was having all the proceeds go to the do cancer foundation and that is just continuous so there's no end to that so if, please donate to that right my man terry we got that right absolutely every time the uh you know spotify pays us or we get any downloads or anything like that we just forward that over to the stand up and shout cancer fund Excellent. We love that. Now, on the granny four-barrel side of things, yeah. you just released a little Art of Deception. You told me about it in the end of January, I think, and said it's almost done. And uh, let me tell you, it rocks. It's a little bit different than Nitro and Freak. And she likes a little different, darker type of... Uh, experimental uh, sound for granny but i love it and the video came out great thanks man yeah thank you yeah it's uh yeah granny decided you know granny's a little more pissed off in this video uh, <laughs> the other ones are they're fun i mean they definitely rock we're proud of them uh, a little more tongue-in-cheek it was a little you know had a little a little thread of humor through it but this one is you know even the even the theme right the the art of deception beware wolves in sheep's clothing uh infiltrators who basically begs the question who do you trust your friends your leaders and so yeah uh the, the government the, woman, the, the spirit of the old woman uh she's she's pretty angry in that video <laughs> and talk about the relevancy with that song and today who do we trust the the election was this we vote, we don't vote, everybody votes. I mean, who's winning, who won? I mean, I don't, I still don't even figure that out. And now with the virus and the get the vaccine, don't get the vaccine. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't even watch the TV anymore, Terry, to be honest with you. There's nothing positive. So the art of deception, you are absolutely right. Who do you trust out there? Who are, who's hiding behind? Like what? the hell is really going on so kudos to you and i want to say dave right david was your co-writer as uh he did before yes, yeah so david bendeth and i wrote that track yes so for the most part you've been releasing singles freak flag nitro sexy <laughs> she likes God. you gotta love these i love the videos you are that race car <laughs> with the chair well, God, hold on your seatbelts <laughs> That had to be so cool to even do. And I don't think there was a stunt double, was there? <laughs> there was not. And you may think that, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I put the, put the rocket chair up there and they're going down the track at, you know, 20, 30 miles an hour. Dude, now I swear, 
And if I had children, I would, I would swear on the children <laughs> that, that it, we're, we're going 65, 70, 80 miles an hour <laughs> down the track. Um, it was Randy crazy. needed a football yeah. helmet and pants. I thought, I thought the wig was going to fly off, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a good time, man. It was a good time. Be careful what you wish for. But nobody can do it like the patriarch of metal, and that's Granny Four fucking Barrel. Yeah. I love her. Everybody <laughs> loves her. I mean, who I mean you gotta do it, right? Why not? I mean, exactly. Well, when we we casted that video in El Paso, we put a shout out to uh like a motor club, like a hot rod club, and all these guys just showed up with random hot rods and one of them in particular had a couch on the top of it. They use it in parades. So they sit up on top of the couch and they throw candy out to the kids. Okay, yeah. So I had my rocking chair there and I was like, man, and I was just joking. I was like, man, wouldn't it be cool if we put the rocking chair? And the guys were all too happy to accommodate. They're like, dude, it's only a couple of bolts. We can just take <laughs> the thing off and put it. Next thing I know, <laughs> they're strapping it on the top of the car. And I mean, that's like, yeah, it was, it's, it's a good memory. Priceless. I don't think you're going to do it again, but you know what? You never know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and speaking of videos, The Art of Deception, what a cool video. And if I, if I read correctly, a castle off the Hudson River? Yeah, Greystone Court. Look it up. Google it. Greystone Court. It's a, uh, I mean, it would be considered a, I don't know, is it is in a, an estate that looks like a castle? It's got like I think it's 13 or 14,000 square feet. And the old gentleman that owns that place, I mean, each room is themed, hand carved, wooden ceilings. Wow. There's been other, there's been other videos uh, done there, but yeah, I, I like to call it a castle. I mean, you could certainly call it a castle. Where, whereabouts in New York? Is it closer to yeah. you or closer Yonkers. to me? Is it Yonkers. Oh, oh, down yeah. below for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the way it all came out, whoever the, uh, choreographed it, uh, did a really good job because when you listen to the song, I've been finding more and more when I look, when somebody sends me, you know, the digital and I listen to the song and I just blast it in my ear and I try to understand the story. But when you see the video in the song, it really comes across, you know, if it's done right. And I got to say your folks uh, behind the video did a really good job because I, I got it and I watched it a bunch of times and said, I like it. Well, you, if you want to you know, know more about the, the people that did it, so it's uh, Allison West and uh, David Brodsky from My Good Eye Visuals. Just uh, go to Instagram, look up My Good Eye. And, and David's done, uh, I mean, he just finished up a Guar video. He's done videos for Clutch, Queensryche. I mean, he's, okay, so he's fantastic. Yeah, he's legit. This isn't his first rodeo. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. We'll have to definitely check that out. Kudos kudos to him, man. It was a, it was a really, it's really... Uh, done quite well and I was interested to ask you about where this landmark was once I saw it near the uh, Hudson River so yeah, yeah, right on the Hudson really cool so it, so the game plan is for the most part continuing to release singles to build up granny which really works out to your advantage because yeah. if you release another one or two before maybe the summer when you hopefully can ditch the walker and get on the road <laughs> hell yeah yeah I'm ready um, but yeah, that's the plan. I mean, we've got more than enough songs, um, but it's just picking the right ones and kind of working working those singles and uh, create a nice video. It's got to make sense. When we feel like there's enough of a fan base, and, and, you know, large enough to justify an album, then, then we'll release the record. Um, and the reason for it is, is not that we... I mean, any fan base is, you know, whether it's small or large, there are fans, we love them. But the thing is, you work so hard on a record, it takes a long time to do a, a really good job on something that you devote all this time to. And then when you release it improperly or with, you know, not enough momentum, then you got a shelf life, right? The, you know, the record's old news in three months. Oh yeah, where's your next record? It's right. like, I just burned up 10 songs and now I got to write another record again. Right, so, another 10 songs. So we just continue to write. In fact, this month, April, I'll be heading down uh, downstate to New Jersey and be writing more with David Bendith. We're just going to keep writing. That's one of the things the pandemic gave us is a lot of downtime to write. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it was like a double-edged sword. A lot of folks in the beginning of last year, March, April, were like, mm, I don't want to release anything. I can't promote it. But then the light bulb clicked on. Everybody's home. Everybody's yeah. sitting around. They're looking for something. So this yeah. works out to your advantage that when you do get on the road in your third song, you don't go, hey, well, this is a song off of our new EP or album, and people get up to go take a whiz and get a beer. <laughs> they know the song, you know, yeah, they yeah. know the they know the whole EP or maybe by that time the whole album. So cool. Yeah, man. Very cool. No, I like it. I like the idea. It, you know, it, it it works. It really does, Terry, anymore. You don't have to kill yourself of this whole album or 12 or 10. Even like you said, one at a time, two. I, I mean, I've seen people do like the EP, four or five, that's it. Yeah, yeah. We're good. We already have the other EP already done. It's on the shelf already. We don't have to kill ourselves. Let's build a momentum of each one. Put out a video, which you have done, right? So yes. every time, yeah, every time we put out a song, we put out a video. I like it. I like it. What else is? Uh, I mean, so is there any? Um, I mentioned throw a, a ditch to Walker and uh, get on the road. Uh, yeah. Any uh, any plans so far? Any thoughts with he's your management? Not, he's, of... he's digging around right now with management, talking to some promoters, just kind of sussing out the situation, trying to find the right fit. Um, you know, as you know, the, there's, there's a lot of optimism right now because the vaccine and different things are happening. People are feeling, I think, a little more adventurous. And I know that the musicians are anxious. I know I am. I'm ready to get out there. But I want it to be right. I want it to be safe. Uh, but Done. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I, I was... I was, uh, I said to my wife, I don't even, I, I don't know. Yes, no, maybe. And then I just said, you know what? I'm just going to get it. So I don't want to be, I don't want to be stopped. If, if there's a live show, I'm going, I got it. Have a nice day. Move on. If I get a mold or, you know, my big toe grows 12 inches <laughs> in five years, you know what? I, that's the chance you take anymore. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, and I, and I respect, certainly respect the folks that are holding off wait to see what goes on. I, I understand all that. But I, to me, I want to travel. I want to get out. I got to, and if that's what it's going to take, and I have no regrets, and I got no symptoms, or my wife, we're, we're all good. Life goes on. So alcohol, alcohol does good justice, Terry. When yeah. you drink, you know, a little Grey Goose before you go for the shot. There it's go. just not going to, it's not going to yeah, yeah. You don't even know what happened. You know? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, such great success. We talked about uh, Leroy, Leroy 13 and Stand Up and Shout. Uh, like when we talked in January, I know you were excited with that all-star lineup, folks from Evanescence, and uh, uh, like you were going to work on another one. You were interested to say, man, yes. I don't want to drop this off. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I can't say anything well, I can give you, I can allude to some of it. So currently, right now, this week, in fact, probably today, I think Will Hunt is uh, – Doing some more drum tracks. We got we got a handful of covers that we're gonna start. We're gonna start knocking them down. Nice. We also have some original tracks as well. But I think we're just gonna kind of I don't know. It's just gonna mix it up. We're having a lot of fun with this. Again, it's downtime, and there's a lot of songs and a lot of artists that I've admired over the years. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do that cover. You know, the song is 30 or 40 years old, and the production was the way that it was 30 years ago. Let's bring it into the future. And let's just redo it just for the love of music and the artist and the song. So we, uh, we got a few, few, uh, well, I could, I could tell you one guy, um, you got to check out this guitar player. His name is Steph, S-T-F, uh, Burns, B-U-R-N-S. He's a guitar player. He's a big Neil Sean fan. Um, legendary. Look him up. I think he's got... I don't know, 100 something thousand followers on Instagram, but he's a, he's a legendary guitar player, played with Vasco Rossi, um, incredible guitar player. Uh, Troy is gonna be revisiting. So this this kind of all-star thing is gonna be like reconfigured a little bit. Okay. There's gonna be some other well-known names, <laughs> big names. You're gonna be like, what? That guy's in here. Oh yeah, dude, we've been talking to some cats and we're super excited. You know, and that, you know, you were so, you said, man, I've sang Stand Up and Shout, and I just, oh, who doesn't love Ronnie James Dio? 
And yeah. here's an opportunity for me to really let go. And here's a great opportunity. I'm sure there are guys in different bands going, man, one of my favorite songs, but I never really get a chance to do it. So here's a chance to expand, put this little all-star group's little touch to it yeah. and, and let it go. That's, that's awesome. I like that. Yeah, so you're going to see something very soon. We're going to knock down two tracks uh, over the course of the rest of this week and next week. And uh, then we're just going to knock out like blocks of two. Um, but we've already got them lined up over the next couple months. And we're just uh, waiting for some callbacks for, for, like I said, we got some great players. And the next time we talk, you're going to be like, holy fuck, dude, you got that oh. guy? You got this guy? Yeah, it's great. And each one of them, like you said, they have their own passion for the artist. And like, for example, Troy from Evanescence. I mean, Troy is, I mean, he is, wow. He is an incredible guitar player. He plays with such feeling and man, he is, he's just amazing. And, you know, he was a huge Dio fan. So when he had the opportunity to do that track, I mean, he just shined. He's like, I really want to show people, you know, this is, I can play like this way too. Uh, and uh, yeah, each guy's got his own his own specialty. So yeah, is, that, is there any better feeling to showcase the influences that got you here? Right, exactly. Exactly. We grew up, and you, you see what? Wow, to my first concert, second concert, and you're a musician. Yeah, it's all about the original and your ideas and stuff like that. But to lay into some some heavy shit of somebody you really idolize and support of a but, classic and bring it into today's world, like you said, that, I mean, Darren, I, do, I can't deal with somebody just doing a cover and then doing it almost exactly like the original. That is stupid to me. That's yeah. my personal fact. That just doesn't do any justice. When you bring your own shit to it and take it to a different direction, whether it, well, heaven below, I got to say, I got to, I love these guys. I got to do a shot, do a sh quick shout out for them. Yeah. Their last album, Rest in Pieces, 12 covers of of Queen, We Will Rock You, uh, um, I, I should know them all, uh, Lincoln Park, oh, wow. Motorhead. Okay. I mean, and they just took it to another level, which was just phenomenal which I just like, holy crap. I mean, my hands are standing. So yeah, no. Nah. And as I said to Patrick Tennyson of, of Heaven Below, Patrick's also the guitarist for Lita Ford. I said, you know, either it sucks bad because it's the original. You're trying to be like, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, like Freddie Mercury. Nobody's ever going to be like fucking exactly. Freddie Mercury. Or you do your own shit. And people are like, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Put your, own, put your own little stamp on it, even if it's just a little bit, you know, just a little. Uh, yeah, I agree completely. Well, it's like, for me, doing these tracks is, is very much the same as, as band rehearsal. Because when, you know, the guys get together, whoever it is I'm playing with, it it certainly we have to get down to business and and do what we set out to but there's moments of band rehearsal that oh my god you can go down rabbit holes for like hours and hours playing <laughs> bits and pieces of every single artist ever known and you know next thing you know you're playing a neil diamond song and playing <laughs> double, double bass to it and shredding and like i mean we'll do anything it's, it's a ride. i love it i just love it you know, and that's funny. You're not like you're not the first one that's told me that that a band just get into it and then they always play like they're one, like you said, a Neil Diamond song, like not maybe not Sweet Caroline, but something. Oh, yeah. And everybody starts. It gets. It opens the door. Yeah. Everybody starts laughing and having a good time. It sets the environment for a good <laughs> session. Even some yeah. of them even say it's in a sound check that people. That get there early, go. What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> exactly, man. This isn't nitro sexy. That is not even close to nitro sexy. But you yeah, know, yeah. whatever. It's great, dude. Yeah, one time we had a rehearsal and we kept playing on nursery rhymes. Uh, uh, <laughs> hickory, <laughs> hickory, <laughs> dog. Yeah, mouse. like really, like fucking heavy with like death metal vocals and just like pounding it. It was great. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Take an Andrew Dice Clay's album and just make it heavy metal. Oh yeah. Start <laughs> screaming. <"Fire!"> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Three blind fucking mice. Where the <laughs> fuck are they going? Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my God, Terry, that is so, that, now you got me cranked up, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, what else do I got here? Your, your songwriting, I know we spoke about. Uh, uh, I, I, I got so many questions. Well, I can ask you from the granny point of view. When you're writing, Terry, do you look at it from the granny character to, to get the message out? Or does that, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's so many topics to choose choose from. I think it really has to do with the with the topic and whether or not it's a good fit. Um, yeah, but I I mean, early Granny, I'm talking. So Granny's been around technically since 2010. Wow, okay? so it was 11 years of what an old these, bitch, huh? <laughs> all these different variations of Granny. Actually, hang on, let me show you this poster. <clears throat> So we had, I mean, I got all kinds of crazy stuff. Here's a, here's a poster from Granny. Way back in the day, we had like a trumpet player. We had a, <laughs> that, you know who that is on banjo? So if anybody knows Hacy Dixie, uh, one of my favorite. Remember the Bluegrass ACDC tribute band? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge band. That's Don Wayne Reno. Wow. And, uh, Don, Don Wayne, yeah, he's, he's shredding on banjo. I mean, we had... Look at this char character here. He's dressed as a baby with a diaper. There, there I am. This was more like a kind of like a redneck kind of hill. It's like a hee haw. Yeah, yeah dude. It, it, it was outraged. We used to have bales of hay. Beverly uh, Hills Billy yeah. goes Granny, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that's one of the early versions of Granny. Here's a here's an actual caricature of her that I had an artist do. Pretty badass, huh? Wow, look at that. Yeah, Boy, yeah. Put put that on a t-shirt, dude. I'm telling you, we got, dude, we got so many assets from Granny. And then, uh, yeah, here's another little crazy poster from Granny. But she's been around a long time. So back, what I, the point I was getting to before I went off on that tangent was um, this time period of Granny, I was always writing from that perspective. I'm like, someone who looks like this, what, what, would, what would someone like that write about? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, now it's just kind of, you know, it took on a life of its own years later. And, you know, it's like this serious rock band, shock rock band. So, yeah, it's just really about the topic, I think, you know. Exactly. Is it, thera is it uh, um, therapeutic for you, your songwriting of the, the, oh. the ideas that, you, you know, whether it's lessons learned, or items growing up or what we're dealing with today to get to get it out of your mind to put it in paper and use the music as an expression as a relief oh. for you oh yeah absolutely yeah 100 percent um and you know there's always a balance too of i mean i've got a you know i've got little composition books and lyric books laying around for you know 20 30 years of everything i've ever scratched down and you know, sometimes ideas just don't come to fruition, but I'll jot something down and I don't know, maybe it's a play on words. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I'll search around. I'll be like, hey, are there any songs written about this? And are they, you know, what are the titles? And if I find, if I find a window, I'm usually extra excited about that. I'm like, hey, there's only one song with this title that I can Ooh. find on the internet or about this particular topic. I mean, there's only so many things you can write about You've got eight chords, okay? You got to figure out a way to <laughs> shape these things with your own identity. But uh, yeah, I mean, the emotional part of it is huge. Uh, trying to convey feelings and, you know, perspectives and things that are important. Uh, emotional release. It's very uh, Yeah, because you, you as <laughs> you a singer, singer has, has, to, has to sell it. You, you, you have to own it. You yeah. know, right? You have to have the ownership of it. So yes, for people better. to really go, oh, okay, I get it. You because get if it. you don't sell it and don't have the ownership, it doesn't have that, doesn't carry that weight. Exactly, exactly. And and, and um, that's a, that's a, it, it, it's, it's cool that you said that because a lot of people I don't think understand. I mean, it's got to be convincing. Exactly. And when I'm in the studio with David Bendeth and he's on the other side of the glass, he's listening to the inflections in, in the voice. You know, he's like, I don't believe that. Fucking sing it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like that's what makes him a good producer. Exactly. It's like you need to you need to you need to find your your personality in that 
you know, particular way of singing it, whether you're, you know, even if you have to search around for the right key, maybe you're trying to sing it too high, but it's always got to be convincing. Right, exactly. Be believable. Yeah. I like that. No, but that's what makes David a great producer. Oh. When somebody says, yeah, Terry, you're there, but you're not there. And you've done it 200 times. And it's the 201st time that you enunciate something or said something and, oh. and sold it. And he's like, that's it. That's, that's it. We've done some six hour vocal sessions before. So like, and I don't take a break. I mean, I might go to the bathroom once, but we just go when we're into it. But sometimes uh, songs will come together and, you know, I'll be like, wow, I wrapped it up. Back ups in the main vocal. It's all done in an hour. Wow. Most of the time, it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> that, now, does Granny play an instrument on when we go to a Granny Four Barrel sh live show? Does Granny grab a guitar? Or no, I mean she could, but because that's how I write, and I'm okay. you know, I'm, not, uh, I'm an adequate guitar player. I'm I'm good enough to uh, hack out a structure of a song, but I'm no. You know, I'm, I'm no uh, prodigy by any stretch, so you probably won't see it. I'd rather play the washboard or something on stage. <laughs> or grab it and just start beating this shit out of somebody with the guitar. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. I said, I got it. Does Granny play any instruments? Who, who chooses Granny's clothes to wear? Is Granny, has her, her, has her outfits... Uh, Got yeah. more creative, or do you yeah. go to the store, your wife, girlfriend, go yeah, to exactly. a vintage store and go, yeah, that's yeah, that works. I mean, yeah, you just kind of like figure out what the theme is. Uh, it's like, okay, like the lat when we went on tour with Texas Hippie, it was like, I kind of felt like I, I wanted to be like, uh, I don't know, from the Victorian era, like black, okay. all in black. So I was like, and I just kind of, and it always has this Norman Bates thread through it too. So, it's got to be kind of scary and kind of creepy. But yeah, I mean, you know, anything from, you know, order something online or just create it ourselves or go to a thrift store, you know, chop up some some uh, clothing and patch it all together. <laughs> you walk but, in, try this stuff on, people are looking at you like, say, it's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 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 ready for it. Early Halloween, just getting ready for yeah, Halloween. Man. Yeah, it's a good time. So for folks like myself who's itching to go see Granny Four Barrel, I know we're going to get a, a kick-ass nonstop. You're not going to be sitting down for two seconds. Yeah, man. What can we expect, Terry? What's Granny bring to the table? Kick your ass inside and out. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you walked into a club and you saw – uh, you know, the show didn't start yet, but you saw stacks of marshals and, a, and you know, a drum set on a riser, and then you see a rocking chair, and there's no one in it. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck is about to happen? <laughs> you, you can bet that something really crazy is about to happen. And, you know, I got the guys to bring it, too. Uh, the maestro, uh, he, he's who we've gave, given the name to. He's our violin player. And this guy is like... He's the guy with the top hat and he's a shredder. And you can search around on YouTube and see some live shows that we did. But we do this Beethoven, uh, Eddie Van Halen uh, eruption mashup. And he does it on his violin and it's pretty sick. I mean, he's like a, he's just like a shredder. He's like uh, Paganini. I don't know if you know who Paganini was, but Paganini was uh, the violin player from, you know, a century or two ago that they say sold his soul to the devil. He was a famous violinist. And, uh, we think that our, our violin player is in that lineage somehow. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got Satan over here playing violin. You got, uh, you know, you got some other character on the other side. We had a butcher. Uh, we had an alchemist. We've got a drummer guy. Uh, you got to open You gotta open for Alice Cooper. Fuck yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, they're like characters. And then uh, Granny tells some stories uh, as well. I mean, you know, I'm going to be sitting in a rocket chair. I'll weave a crazy sinister rock and roll tale and and then we'll just you know scream some heavy metal at you sing some rob halford high notes uh sing some ronnie james dio or granny james dio in this case granny and, james dio, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude but oh, i love it terry man you're you got some incredible chops let me tell you you granny brings it and I can't wait for Granny to bring some mischief and mayhem and craziness 
to Poughkeepsie, New York, or anywhere yeah, down yeah. the South, because I'm going to it. You can check out all about Granny Four Barrel at grannyfourbarrel.com. Please buy The Art of Deception. Buy, buy, buy. That's the key word, as Terry said, with a lot of heart and soul and time into it. You can find them on all the socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and hit the subscribe button for Granny Four Barrel. And also, Leroy 13. Don't forget that. I can't wait for that to pop up. That's going to be yeah. a lot of that's going to be a lot of fun, Terry. It'll be less than a month. You'll you'll hear a track. Well, then I'll be talking to you in about a month again. Yeah, we can play the video, man. Yeah, dude. Terry, thank you so much for your time. I'm happy my webcam did not. I'm not done yet. That, that <laughs> shit to bed. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I have, brother. I sure did, man. Thanks again, Pat. Yeah, I love it, man. Time to rock a little granny for a barrel right here. I'm Pat Soundbites and the Art of Deception. Go buy it today. Yeah. <laughs>